chose the best spot. Yeah. Yeah. I spoke Tell to my missus what? though. We're doing it now. She wanted to know why. We're doing it now. Doing it now. Yeah. yeah. Now. I found she was over there. 72. Mm -hmm. Refuge mm -hmm. from fallout hazards. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you Introductory. The purpose of seeking refuge from fallout is to avoid, as far as is practical, dosage to the body resulting from gamma rays, which are potentially harmful even in very small quantities. The minimum requirement of a refuge room is that it should be sufficient to protect its occupants from radiation sickness. A second function of a refuge room is to enable the occupants to avoid contamination of their persons, externally or internally. Principles. Three. There are three principles of protection, viz. One. Gamma rays are intense near their source, but are dissipated at a distance from it. Two, they are weakened very much in passing through materials, the weight of the material in their path being the criterion. Great thickness of heavy material provides the best shielding. Three, fallout radioactive material is very active when it first falls but as time passes, its activity weakens. These are the three principles which guide us in selecting, preparing, and outfitting a refuge room. Selection, four. Fallout will lie on the ground outside a building, a dwelling, say, and also on the roof. Your refuge room should be as far as possible from this so that centrally, i.e. away from external walls and on the ground floor, away from the roof is the ideal place. This is the general room. Buildings vary a great deal, and a multi-storey building with concrete floors and a roof might provide good refuge on several floors, whereas a flimsily built bungalow would require a lot of work to be done before good refuge could be obtained in it. In a two-storey semi-detached home, the refuge should be chosen next to the party wall, as this situation is centrally placed in the block made up of the two houses. Six, a terrace house has the advantage of the shielding provided by the houses built onto it on either side, so that here, Refuge should be sought on the lowest floor as near as possible to the line parallel to and midway between the front and back walls. Improving, seven. Radiation from outside will penetrate the walls and enter your place of refuge, but will be weakened <coughs> in the process. It will come unhindered through the closed windows so that these will have to be built up with a layer of sandbags, building blocks, boxes of earth or some substantial material. Also, heavy furniture such as bookcases, an upright piano, etc., placed against the external wall will add to its shielding power. A door leading directly outside would give very little protection and would have to be built up or shielded just as in the case of a window. Eight, radiation <coughs> from fallout on the roof will make its way down through the building to your refuge. And as the materials in the roof and floors through which it comes are not very heavy, it will not be weaker much. It would help a little to have the heavy furniture placed in the room over the refuge. Concrete blocks on the floor of the room above it would help very much, but could not be done without else. technical advice as to whether the floor could support this extra load. <coughs> Protective factor. Nine. When all preparations are made, the doses one would receive inside refuge would be very much smaller than that received outside the building in the open. The number of times the outside dosage is reduced by being in the refuge is the protective factor or attenuation factor of the refuge. 
This will vary very much from building to building. A refuge in small bungalow might reduce the outside dose 10 times only, whereas one in the basement of a tall building might have a protection factor of 300 or more. Calculation 10. Protective factors cannot be accurately known beforehand, but by making some reasonable assumptions, they can be calculated approximately. This is done by calculating separately the contribution of radiation which enters the room and each of the four walls of the refuge, having regard to the dimensions of the building and the weight of materials in the walls and roof, etc. These estimates will be the responsibility of the scientific intelligence officer and will be done by his team and by wardens selected and trained by him. And that's the end of refuge from fallout hazards. Thank you, Brian. Well, there may be more. <laughs> Reporting instructions. One. The importance of clear and concise reporting can scarcely be overemphasized. The speed at which a situation is got under control depends directly on this factor. Reports may be written and sent by messenger, or they may be sent by telephone to the next highest level of control. Telephone messages should be written before transmission. Every message must be signed by the person authorising it. But if it is sent by telephone, its name need not be transmitted. Written messages. A copy of every message sent should be retained. Carbons for this purpose are provided in the standard message pads. This message pad has been specially selected for convenience in warning reporting. Plain sheets of paper, however, will serve the purpose equally well, provided, of course, that copies are made. Reports in a damaged area should conform to a standard pattern for two reasons. Hey, so that the writer will not omit any important just information. The mnemonic below will help the wardens to remember the pattern of messages. Apt, red, crack, column. A, B, T. R, D, D. C, R, A, C, K. O, L, U, M, N, S. The index list of letters given above remind the message writer of essential items of information. A, attack. One, type of attack. For example, nuclear, high explosive, incendiary, chemical warfare, biological warfare. Two, scale of attack, light, moderate, so that's the way you heavy. Do it. So I'm not telling you that you're actually Three, doing it, but that's the energy. Location of GZ for nuclear That's the energy you have to do it with. Yeah. E.g. GZ North. I mean, could you bring me one more person? Someone you don't know. Eat. Place in this area affected. E.g. 51 to 63 Fancy Road or Bull Post Area. T. Time of attack. E.g. 1445 hours. R. Radioactivity. Time dose rate reading. E.g. 4 RPH 
at 1600 hours. Nil, if not present. Blank, written as dash, if you have no information to offer. E.g. the case of a patrol warden who has no survey meter. E. Entrance to this post recommended. E.g. Ferrisford Avenue. D. Debris blocked listed roads. C. Casualties. Subdivided into four classes. R. Equals requiring rescue. A. Equals requiring ambulances. C. Equals requiring services of casualty collecting parties. K. Equals killed. O. Operations threatened by fire, coal, gas, electricity, water, sewage, suspect contamination, etc. L. Listed premises damaged. U. Unexploded missiles. Position and is VRO required or not? It's, it's for you the worst book in the world. And by burning this book, you're going to the from the ministry of the M. Mains damage, gas, electricity, water, sewage, etc. N. Notes, bracket, remarks, close brackets. S. Services present. Whether his casualties will require certain services. <coughs> this is done by inserting under the heading R, A, C, and K the words some, many, none, as indicated by this reconnaissance. Under the headings A and T, there is unlikely to be any change in succeeding messages. The information under these headings, however, should be repeated on all messages. This saves having to refer to previous messages, which may in fact have failed to reach their destination. The distinction between reporting nil and blank from the heading heading is best illustrated by an example. You, hyphen, 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 spoken as blank, indicates that the warden has no information to offer about unexploded missiles at this stage. You, nil. Okay. Is now satisfied that there are no <clears throat> you nil indicates that the warden is now satisfied that there are no unexploded missiles in his area.